Hey, boys and girls. If you really want to learn all about the equipment on a fire engine, you just have to watch Firefighter George and Fire Engines, Volumes 1 and 2. I will show you how every piece of equipment is used in real, live action. And if you love trains like I do, then Firefighter George and Steam Trains and Firefighter George and Today's Mighty Trains will teach you how these mighty engines work. I will show you how the coal burns to make the trains go and how the circus animals ride on the trains. And if you love airplanes, then you just have to watch Firefighter George and Amazing Airplanes where we get in the cockpit of an F-15 fighter jet. Learn plane safety, learn how planes fly, and salute the Blue Angels. Start Smarter videos teach you how to enjoy these big machines safely. This video has two lessons. Let's start lesson one. Hey boys and girls, I'm Firefighter George. Look, the fire engines are leaving the station for an emergency. Hey boys and girls, have you ever seen a big fire truck like this racing down the highway with its lights all flashing and the sirens blaring and you looked at it and saw how big it was and you said, hey, I wonder what's in each one of these compartments. Well, I'm Firefighter George. Today, Firefighter Christy and I are going to finish opening up all of the compartments and find out what these pipes here do and what's in this compartment and who rides in this compartment, and most of all, what's in the cab that makes the sirens and the lights all flash. So you guys ready to get started? Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Let's go have some fun. Hey, boys and girls. This is our fire dog, Maggie. Maggie lives here at the fire station with all the firefighters. Maggie helps make sure the firefighters stay safe. And all the firefighters make sure Maggie stays safe. Junior firefighter Carson and junior firefighter Avery always make sure Maggie has food and water in her bowls. Maggie's a Dalmatian. We can tell that because of her white hair and her black spots. She even has black spots inside in her mouth. Hey, let's go look around the station and see where Maggie plays. Come on, Maggie. Sometimes fire dog Maggie likes to sniff around the firefighter's boots and jackets. Fire dog Maggie also likes to pretend that she is riding on the fire engine on the way to an emergency with firefighter Alex and firefighter Will. Fire dog Maggie has her own bed at the fire station and loves to play with Start Smarter Junior firefighters when they visit, like Christiana and Caleb. But mostly, fire dog Maggie likes to run around the fire station and help the firefighters keep alert for an emergency. All right, boys and girls, now I want to introduce you to my friend, Engineer John. John's going to show us what all the neat buttons and switches in the cab do. Well, boys and girls, welcome to my fire truck, and this is Engineer's seat. What we do from here is we control all the lights and we drive the engine. 
The first thing we do when we get into an engine is we have to turn it on. The first thing we always have to do is turn on our battery so that we have power. And it's this top switch over here. He presses this button and it runs a test to make sure it's ready to go. And that's what that beeping noise is. And then right over here you press this button right underneath it. And we're ready to go. Okay? Now up here, all these buttons up here, they control all my lights outside the truck. And this is the master button which turns them all on at once and see if I have them all flipped, they'll all turn on at once. And I'll show you what that looks like, okay? These are the lights on top in the front of the fire engine. And these are the lights on top in the back. Look at all the lights on the face of the truck. And we even have lights on the back. And this here is my air horn to let all the people know that they need to get out of my way because I've got to be in a hurry. This here is my radio for when I get out of the truck. And over here are my radios for when I'm in the truck. And I can talk to the police or to an ambulance if we need, if people are hurt or to other firemen, especially my captain who's going to give him, be giving me instructions on all my duties while we're on the fire scene. Here's our what we call a light bar or an arrow stick. And we, when we turn it on, we can tell the traffic when we're blocking the road to go either left. See how the arrow stick lights are flashing to the left, boys and girls? Right. Now look how the arrow stick lights are flashing to the right. And this one here lets them know that they have to stop and can't go around because the road is completely blocked. Look, boys and girls, the lights now are flashing both to the left and to the right. After we get all our lights going and we get to where we want to go, our job as engineers is to pump water to the firefighters who are going to need the water to put out the fire. And to do that, what I have to do is I have to take the engine so it's no longer driving me forward, but it's driving the water out of the tank. And how I do that is I have to take my shift knob here and put it into neutral. And I have to let it sit a second and then I slip it down into pump gear. After that, I take my transmission or my gear shift here and I put it into drive. And you should hear the noise that has it changes over. Okay, and after that, I'm all ready to go and get on the pump panel and pump the water for the firefighters. Very cool. Thanks, Engineer John. Let's watch now as the big fire engine connects to the fire hydrant to supply water into the pump. First, Engineer Alex jumps out of the cab and places the wheel chock behind the wheel. Next, the firefighters stretch the hydrant hose to the fire hydrant and take the right equipment out of the engineer's compartment. Firefighter David then tightens the hydrant wrench onto the hydrant and unscrews the protective cap on the hydrant so he can attach the hydrant connector. Firefighter David then screws on the hydrant connector and opens up the hydrant to force out any objects that might have fallen in. Let's like leaves or small rocks. We wouldn't want the water from the hydrant to force those into our pump. Firefighter John then attaches the hydrant hose to the connector and makes sure there are no kinks in the hydrant hose while Firefighter David opens the hydrant back up to supply water into the pump for the engineer. Okay, boys and girls, let's talk about some of the most important equipment a fireman has, and that's the clothes and the gear that he wears. He's got his very special jacket, his very special boots and pants, his special gloves, and his very special helmet. Now let's have Firefighter Christie start to put this on. The first thing the firefighters do when they get to the station is put on their boots. The boots are rubber, and the rubber is there so they don't 
get their feet all wet in all the water that they're spraying from the fire hoses. So you put your boots on. The next thing you do is pull up your pants. This is a, these are very special pants and made of a very special material called Nomex. Nomex is fire resistant, which means it's really, really hard for it to catch on fire. So it's going to protect firefighter Christy in a fire from all the heat that might come from the flames and even catching on fire sometimes. So she's got her pants on now and she's got her special boots on. And as I said, with the boots, the rubber, and they have a steel toe in case something falls on her feet in the fire, it won't hurt her toe. She's also got a steel shank or a piece of steel metal right in her boots so it protects the bottom of her feet when she's walking in the fire in case she steps on nails or broken glass or just anything on the ground that might hurt her feet. So she's protected from the feet all the way to the waist. Now the next piece of equipment she's going to put on is her jacket. This is made of the same material that her pants are. It's really thick and it makes you really hot but it protects you from the heat of the fire and it protects you from the flames of the fire. And as you see, the first thing she does is there's a piece of Velcro in here. So she's going to seal her body off. She's going to make sure nothing can get in there by Velcroing it up all the way. Then to make sure the Velcro doesn't come off, she snaps all of these very, very special buttons that snap on so they don't come off and they lock into place so they can't ever come off. The next thing Christy's going to do is roll up her collar. This is going to protect her neck. We can't have any flames or any heat coming at her in this area because that's where she needs to breathe from. So she puts it all up and the Velcro goes all the way up and around the inside like that. The last thing she's going to do, or should I say the second to last, is put on her helmet. Now the helmet is made of a very special plastic so it can't break under pressure. So if something falls on her, if she's inside and the roof falls down on her, or she's outside and parts of the building come blowing off and hit her, it's not going to hurt her head. Really solid. You also see these reflectors on the helmet. That's so the other firemen at the fire can find Christy and can see her. So if they're in this side of the building, they know some other firefighters are over there and they can always stay in constant contact with each other. That means they're going to stay safe. Okay, Christy, show us the inside of the helmet. These flaps come up like this, and they protect the rest of Christy's neck and her ears. So firefighters don't have to worry about not having this area protected. So let's put it on, firefighter Christy. So now look at her, boys and girls. Her feet are protected, her legs are protected, her chest is protected, and her arms, her ears are protected, and her neck is. The last thing we do is we lower the face shield. That's going to protect her from anything blowing into her face and hurting her eyes. Firefighters have to see in the fire, so they've got to make sure they protect their face. Of course, they'd have the air mask underneath there so they can breathe, but they've got to protect their face and their eyes. Look at that. She doesn't even feel it. Now, what are we missing, boys and girls? We're missing something important. That's right, her gloves. The reason she puts on her gloves last is because she has to get all the other equipment on her. And these are very thick gloves, and once again, very special gloves that don't catch on fire. And they're going to protect her hand from the heat and anything she might pick up that might cut her hands. She's got to be very careful that she keeps her hands in very good order because she's got to spray the fire hose and use the axe and get people out of the fire safe. So she puts her gloves on last, and look how they tuck right up into the fire jacket. That means her wrists are protected also. So if we look again at our firefighter, she's protected from the head down to her toes. Nothing can harm her now, but that doesn't mean she's always going to be safe. Firefighters always go into the building in twos. They go in as buddies. Firefighter Christy and Firefighter George, we go in together on all of our fires. I protect Firefighter Christy and she protects me. So if I'm in trouble, she can help me get out. And if she's in trouble, I'm going to help Firefighter Christy get out. Buddy systems are very important. And that's one more thing to know, children. Never go into a fire. If you see a fire, you dial 911. But don't go in there alone. Let the firefighters go in there. They will help you. 
Only firefighters go into a fire because they have the special clothes and air packs to keep them safe while they are fighting the fire. Swan it all, firemen. Here you go, 10, 8, 10, 6, 10, 10. Now let's watch how the firefighters get dressed for an emergency. They first put on their boots and pull up their pants. Then they put on their fire helmets and jackets. See how fast firefighter Rebecca is? Fire dog Maggie wants to go to the emergency too, but she has to stay back to protect the station. After they have buttoned up their jackets and tightened their helmets, they all run to the emergency van and get into place. Then fire dog Maggie watches as they race off to the emergency. Now let's watch these Start Smarter Junior Firefighters try to dress in our fire drill. Look at Start Smarter Junior Firefighters, James and Leah, putting on their fire jackets. Now they need to put on their fire pants and fire boots. Start Smarter Junior Firefighters, Madeline, Tess, and Neil are putting on their special jackets too. Now Start Smarter Junior Firefighters James and Leah are finishing as they put on their helmets and run out of the station to get into the fire engine. And finally, Start Smarter Junior Firefighters Madeline, Tess, and Neil are finishing up and putting on their helmets. This is Captain Dan. He's in charge of this fire engine and all the firefighters on it. Can you tell us about some of your responsibilities? Absolutely. Hi, boys and girls. I'm Captain Dan. My first responsibility is to get us to the fire scene safely. The engineer drives the vehicle and I navigate. I make sure we get there. We have addresses. We have a computer that also tells us how to get to the scene by punching in addresses and we get maps. Secondly, we have to get there safely by signaling everyone on the road that we're on an emergency call and headed to a fire. The way that we do that is by operating sirens. This is the siren control here. That's the electric siren that makes all the different siren sounds. And I also talk to the main station on this radio. Fire. to communicate where we are and what other trucks we may need on the scene. This is the siren button right here. That's the whale siren that is really loud. Once we get to the fire scene safely, it's my responsibility to make sure that all the firefighters remain safe as we approach the burning building. Our first responsibility then is to make sure that no one is in the building and that everything is safe in order to enter it. And, and try to put it out. We then pull hoses and approach the building with, with our hoses ready to squirt water. And when, when we squirt water and put out the fire, we have to clean up. And then we put all the hoses back on the truck, and return to the station, and everyone's safe. That's great, Captain Dan. Thanks. What's in here? Let's start lesson two now for older junior firefighters. Here we go, boys and girls. There is an emergency, and we have to go right now. See how fast all the fire engines have to go down the road? Firefighter John and Firefighter David 
are putting on their air tanks in the back of the fire engine as they race down the road. Now they have arrived at the emergency, and it is time for Captain Dan to give out his orders. He is in charge. Okay, boys and girls, on the other side of the fire truck, all the compartments are the same as on the other side, but with one difference. We've got some ladders here, and we use these extension ladders to take off to get to very high places to save people out of the second story, sometimes the third story of a building. And you take these off and you can raise them right up with the rope and that's why they're called extension ladders because they extend to twice the size of what you see here. The second piece of apartment equipment, this is the pipe pole. And what we use this pole for is to poke at the ceiling and tear down the ceiling so we can find out where the fire is. We can also use it as we walk through very dark places to make sure we don't step on anything or run into anything. Very, very tall pike pole. It's about 10 feet tall. And that's what's on this side of the fire truck, just like the other side. Engine four is 1097. We have heavy smoke, we'll be ventilating the roof. Send back up. Captain Dan has found heavy smoke at the emergency and has ordered Firefighter Drew, Firefighter David, and Firefighter Scott to set up the ladder and get the axe. They have to cut a hole in the roof to let the smoke out. Firefighter Drew and Firefighter Scott are setting up the extension ladder. Once the ladder is raised, they need to tie it off to keep it safe. Firefighter David is ready with the axe and Captain Dan is watching to make sure everyone stays safe. Now Firefighter David climbs to the top of the roof and prepares to cut the hole to let the smoke out. Inside this compartment, we have portable lights and a portable deluge. We use the lights in case we ever go to a fire at night and need to light up the area after we've put the fire out. So we can just take these lights right out of the compartment and set them up where it is dark and they are needed most. See how bright the lights are? And we have a portable deluge. Remember the deluge? It's up on top of the truck and it's like a big water cannon. In case we can't get the fire engine close enough to the fire, we'll set up the portable deluge nearby. Unlock the water cannon from the top of the truck, place it into this special holder, and then move it closer to the fire. Let's watch and learn as the firefighters set up the portable deluge. First, Firefighter Drew gets the portable deluge base out of the compartment. And Firefighter Scott unlocks the deluge gun from the top of the truck and brings it closer to the fire. Firefighter John sets up the four inch hose to supply water to the deluge gun as Firefighter Scott places the deluge gun into the base. Firefighter Drew locks the deluge into place as Firefighter John attaches the hose. Then Engineer Alex charges the 4-inch hose, sending water to the portable deluge gun so it can put water on the fire. See how far the deluge gun can spray the water? In this compartment, we have some of the heavy-duty tools that the firemen use. One of the most basic things they use is the axe. Now, you need to be very careful if you ever see these things. They have a very, very sharp blade. These help the firefighters get through locked doors when people are trapped inside, or maybe even to make a hole in a roof to let the smoke out. See how the axe cuts right through this wall? So we always want to be very careful when we have it around children. And you never want to play with this on your own. We've also got a very large bar in here that we can pry doors open with. And here we've even got some smaller tools. So what's in this compartment again? 
axes and pry bars to break down doors for people who are trapped. Right. So these are the tools that the firemen use at a fire to try to help get through walls and to put holes in the roof if they need to to let the smoke out and just to help them get in and out of buildings. What do you think about that? Really neat. Really neat. Yeah. This is the last compartment on this back of the truck. What they store in here is the big, powerful fan. This fan is run by gasoline. And sometimes, you know, after a fire, there's a lot of smoke in the building, right? So what they do is they put this fan in a door or a window, and it blows all the smoke right out of the house. That way, the people can go back in there sooner, and the firemen can make sure all the fire is put out. So how is this fan run again? By gas. Right, gasoline. And it puts all the smoke back out of the house. Good job, firefighters. Let's get the exhaust fan up. Let's get all the smoke out of the building. Now that the fire is over, Captain Dan congratulates his firefighters on a job well done and instructs them to set up the smoke ejector fan to clear the smoke out of the building. See how the smoke is being pushed right out of the window? All right, guys, now let's take a look inside this compartment. In here, we have a wrecking tool, and this is used to pry open doors, to punch out windows, to get into spaces that, that might be locked. It's really heavy and has three different kinds of tips at the end for different emergencies. See how Firefighter Drew and Firefighter Alex are opening up the door with the wrecking tool? All right, it's a big, yeah. heavy, special tool. Can I see how nope, heavy? this one might be kind of dangerous, so I'm going to put this one back, okay? We also have extra air tanks for any extra firemen that might come to the fire to help us fight. Firefighters can take these right out of this compartment and put them on to breathe air. We also keep long, strong rope next to the air tanks in case we need to lower anything from tall buildings. Let's watch and learn how firefighters quickly put on their air tanks and air masks. First, firefighter Heather and firefighter John pick up their air tanks and put their arms through the arm straps. Then, they pull down on these special straps to make the air tank fit tight against their back. Next, they tighten the air tank belt around their waist. After the air tank is fitted tight and secure on their body, they must put on their air mask and make sure it is tight around their face so the smoke can't get in. After their air mask is tight, they put on their fire helmet and strap it tight onto their head. They make sure they have their gloves, and then they turn on their air tank by turning the knob on the bottom of the tank. Finally, they have to connect the air mask hose to the air tank so they can breathe the air in a smoky building. When both firefighters are finished, they run to the fire together as buddies. Okay, boys and girls, one more really important thing to remember. Firemen are your friends, but they have to wear the special gear, the special air pack and the special air mask so they can breathe in a fire. If you ever, ever see anybody like this in your house, don't be afraid. Yell out as loud as you can. I'm over here, I'm over here. Because these are the firefighters and they're there to save you. Don't forget, it might sound scary, but these are really nice people and they're there to help you. Hey, boys and girls, look at our very special guest, Lieutenant Poole. Lieutenant Poole is going to teach us all about ladder trucks. Ladder trucks are different than fire engines because they carry all of the ladders and the very special extension ladder that goes way up into the air. So let's listen to Lieutenant Poole tell us all about fire trucks. Hey, boys and girls, I'm Lieutenant Poole. This is a ladder truck. It goes high, very, very high up in the sky. 
It can reach up and help you down through your second story windows and put you on the ground safely. Well, let's go learn how the big ladder goes into the sky. Come on. The first thing a ladder truck must do is lower the stabilizers. There are two on each side towards the front of the truck and two on each side towards the back. These help make sure the fire truck doesn't tip over when the ladder goes high, high into the sky. Now that the stabilizers are securely in place, Lieutenant Poole can use his control to make the ladder go up into the air. See how the ladder can go up high? Firefighters can use this special ladder to rescue people from tall buildings when they are trapped in a fire. They also use this ladder to fight fires. These ladder trucks are very, very important in cities where there are a lot of tall buildings. Lieutenant Poole can also use his controls to make the ladder come back down. Fire trucks have ladders and help save people, while fire engines pump water to the hoses to help fight the fires. So a fire engine will pump water to this special fire nozzle on the ladder bucket. Thanks, Lieutenant Poole. Okay, boys and girls, Fire Marshal Jerry's giving another real important lesson on fire safety. So let's go to the back of the truck and hear what he has to say. Firemen use special equipment to help us talk. Do you know what this is called? A walkie-talkie. We call those walkie-talkies or firemen's radios. And I can talk on this and talk to the police or my other firemen. You want to hold that for me? Now that's very important for the fire department. But I want to show you something else that's even more important. When you have a fire in your house, what should you do? Tell call 911. And you use your house phone to call 911. When you have a fire, or if you smell something funny in your house, like I'm smoke, why that phone didn't work anymore. Or if you hear a fire burning in your house, you should tell your parents or guardians or grandparents. And Fire if they are not there, you can dial, what do we dial? 911. Nine one. One. Boys and girls, we always dial 911. And that lets the fire department come and help us be safe in our houses. And if we do have a fire, they will help us put it out. Now let me show you one other thing, and this is the most important piece of equipment that we have in fire safety. It's a very small piece of equipment, but it is very important. Can anyone tell me what this is? What is this? Oh, I know what it is. It's an alarm. What kind of alarm is this? Um, well, like when um, it's um, that thing is a smoke detector, and if it um, like smells smoke, um, then the alarm will go off. That's right. And where does this go? Where do we put these? On the wall. In our yeah. houses, and we put them on the wall by our bedroom or in the hallway outside our bedrooms. And if there's a fire, or even if there's just smoke in our house, these will go off and they make a sound and they will call, tell us to wake up. And then when we wake up and get our phone, what do we call? 911. We call 911. But we don't want to call false alarms. We don't want to call false alarms, but if you have the least idea that there might be a fire or smoke, you and you hear your smoke detector, you call 911. Now remember, we have lots of big equipment. We have the fire truck that's driven by the engineer and the captain, and we have hoses, and they spray water, and we have air packs and all those things. But in your house, this is a very important piece of equipment. 
But do you know what the absolute most important piece of equipment is? Look at me. The most important piece of equipment is right here. Can you do that? Oh, Point I to your heads with me. It's your brain. It's your brain. You need to think. Do I smell smoke? Do I hear a fire? Is my detector going off? And think about that. Or if your friends catch fire, what do we do? Stop, Stop drop, drop, and roll. roll. But always we're thinking because in fire safety, our most important piece of equipment is not the helmet, not the radio, and not the fire truck. It's our brain and our thinking about what we should do. Like leave the building, wait for the firemen on the street, let them help us get our pets, wake up our parents or our brothers and sisters, and always be helpful and cooperative with the firemen. Okay, boys and girls, I hope today we've learned a lot of things about fire safety, about the big trucks and how they come to help us, and the things that we can do with our friends and our parents and our brothers and sisters, and the things that we can do in our houses to make sure that we all live safe and happy and healthy in our houses and that we always are safe in what we do. Good. Okay boys and girls, now what do we do if we ever catch on fire? Stop, drop, and roll, right? Y'all yeah. say it. Stop, drop, and roll. One more time. Stop, drop, and roll. Y'all want to practice? Okay, say one more time. Stop, stop drop, drop, and roll. Run, run, run. Stop, drop, roll. Yeah. Ready? One, two, go. Stop. Look, boys and girls, it's an emergency, and the firefighters are getting their ladder so they can get up on the roof of the building. They first unhook the ladder and take it off the truck. See firefighter Drew joining them with the fire axe? They must quickly go towards the fire, but always staying safe. See firefighter Drew directing firefighter John and firefighter Heather on the best way to set up the ladder? Now they are extending the extension ladder so it will be tall enough to reach the second floor of the building. See Firefighter John holding the ladder to make sure it doesn't slip or fall? And now Firefighter Heather is carefully climbing to the roof in her air tank and air mask. Next, Firefighter John is going up the ladder with the fire axe. He must be very careful going up the ladder with the axe. And now, Firefighter Heather and Firefighter John are ready to cut a hole in the roof with the fire axe. Thank you! Hey parents, how would you like to have a red Junior Firefighter's t-shirt for your little firefighter? Just like Engineer John here is wearing, We'll send you one and make you an honorary member, a junior member of the fire department. To do that, tell us what size you need, size 2-4 or size 6-8, and send $6.99, that's $6.99, to Start Smarter Videos, P.O. Box 421194, Atlanta, Georgia, 30342, and we'll send you red junior firefighters t-shirt just like this. <laughs>